Welcome to Africa. In this presentation, you'll be learning about a few of the major diseases in Africa, such as AIDS, malaria, and so on. Now because disease is such a large topic, our group has split it up into separate diseases, not regions. Now it's time to begin with malaria. In Africa, malaria kills a vast majority of its total population. 20% of that is children under 5 years of age. The worst place to catch the infection is south of the Sahara, which is home to one of the most efficient and deadly species of mosquitoes. Every 30 seconds, two children die in Africa from malaria alone. 3,000 people each day and more than 1 million every year. A majority of this is in the sub-Saharan Africa. There is no known cure for malaria, only drugs to delay the effects. Of course, the university leaders have found a cure, but it's never been tested on humans, only rodents. The next step is trying it out, but this has not happened yet, so I can't really go into detail. That's the end of malaria. Now it's time to move on to yellow fever. Yellow fever is a disease that is transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected mosquito and has only been recorded in Africa. Adides aegypti is the most common type of mosquito that carries yellow fever. However, some ticks can also be carriers. Some disease lasts three to six days or can be life-threatening if gone untreated. One of the largest outbreaks of yellow fever occurred in 2003, killing many Africans. Some of the symptoms are shock, bleeding, and kidney and liver failure. If you do get liver failure, it causes jaundice, which is when your skin and the whites of your eyes turn yellow, which is where yellow fever gets its name. To prevent yourself from contracting yellow fever, you can do a couple of things. You could treat your clothing with insecticide, permethrin, and put insect repellent on exposed skin. There is no specific treatment for yellow fever, but there are some things that can help the side effects of it. You could use vaccines, symptomatic rest, fluids, and naproxen. You should try to avoid taking aspirin and also try to avoid any other mosquito exposure. By following some of these steps, Africans can avoid contracting the illness in the first place, ultim ultimately improving their economy. The Ebola virus was first associated with an outbreak of 318 people. Of the 318, 280 of them died. That same year, 1976, 284 people in Sudan also became infected with the virus. 156 died. The Ebola virus can infect both monkeys and humans. The outbreaks of these diseases are self-contained because they kill their hosts so quickly that they rapidly run out of people to infect. The Ebola virus has a mortality rate of 88% and the disease is not contained to Africa. The Ebola virus spreads through, throughout the blood system multiplying in many organs. It causes severe damage to the liver, lymphatic systems, kidneys, ovaries, and testes. Platelets and linings of arteries are severely damaged, which results in profuse bleeding. Mucosal surfaces of the stomach and heart membrane are also affected. 
Internal bleeding results in shock and acute respiratory distress, leading to death. Here are some symptoms of Ebola. Fever, chills, headache, anorexia, and muscle pain. As the disease progresses, nausea, anorexia, vomiting, sore throat, stomach pain, and diarrhea are common. Bleeding occurs from multiple sites, including the digestive tract, lungs, and the gums. Death occurs within 7 to 16 days. There are no drugs that work against it, and there is no vaccines. <clears throat> the virus is transmitted by any direct contact with the blood, bodily fluids, and tissues of an infected person. Transmissions can also occur by handling infected chimpanzees. That's all there is to know about Ebola. Now on to HIV and AIDS, which is a very universal problem. In Africa, HIV and AIDS are both a major problem. One thing you need to know is that HIV is the virus that can eventually lead to AIDS, and beyond that, death. HIV and AIDS have hurt the country in general, but mostly in sub-Saharan Africa. The full extent of the disease has only recently sunk in into many African countries. Yet because of poor financing, the government can do little to nothing to help their own people have health clinics they desperately need. But the real ones that are feeling the full magnitude of the problem are the children of infected parents. Many children are now raised by their grandparents, or they are merely abandoned on streets, where they form their own child-headed households, or they die. The social and economic consequences are already being forced onto the whole of Africa, not only in health, but also in education, industry, agriculture, transportation, human resources, and the economy in general. In conclusion, diseases like malaria, yellow fever, Ebola, and AIDS have hurt not only in the infected, but their family as well. Most of this is due to poor financing of the government. And sometimes it's because people live in seclusion from the rest of Africa. Also, when disease strikes a household, the children are left the task of providing for their own parents, which leaves no time for school. With no education, ultimately the children have no future, destroying the economy altogether. Oh, wow.